now we have finally a step on the right direction. Finally, some good news in here. So I'm kind of happy about that. But before we go there, guys, I have to say I got deceived because the article said no more prayer before before football in LA. And I thought, oh, football, finally something that I can talk about. I can say I don't like football because I'm the worst Latino ever. But then I went there and it was just about that thing, that rugby thing that you Americans call football and you play with your hands. Why do you call football soccer? What's wrong with you people? Okay, but that's beside the point. You will answer for those crimes later. The important thing is, finally, the Jefferson uh, County School District in Alabama has agreed to stop broadcasting a Christian prayer over the PA system at the start of school-sponsored football games and events after a parent complained to a national nonprofit. You know this one, F uh, FFR, Freedom from Religion. Do you know her? Do, have you heard about those guys? They are kind of awesome. And... Yeah, the, this uh, nonprofit that works to promote the separation of church and state. So finally, finally, things are uh, starting to go into the into a good direction. It's not only this constant push of religion trying uh, being forced onto people. No, now finally somebody uh, is doing something, and uh, they um, it's it has been stated that. Quoting the article, everyone should be allowed to participate fully and be fully members of their school and just enjoy, just, sorry, just go enjoy a football game on Friday night without having to worry about religious implications. Because this uh, prayer, the starting of each one of these things, is pressure. We know that they are pressuring people into becoming Christians and to forcing this idea of, yeah, this Christian country and all of that. So this makes me happy because. Even though despite, yeah, later we will talk about something else. But for now, the initial idea that freedom from religion is finally being able to help in these ways and to make important changes like this makes me happy. So I'm finishing this into a, in a more in a kind of happier way, less emo, um, more more positive, optimistic. Let's call it caut optimistic. Yeah, cautelosamente optimista, if you get my Spanish. So, yeah, Kelly, do you have something to say about this? Well, thank God for the FFRF. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not even sure how they even got away with this since the Supreme Court ruled specifically against school-sponsored prayers at football games back in the year 2000. I can only think it's because of the complacency of the population of the area that nobody cared that they were all good with this, right? So nothing was nothing ever changed. And the best part of this story to me, the one bright spot is it took one student to stand up and say, this is wrong. This needs to be changed. One teenager, a high school student stood up for what was right, took the action and he made it right. I saw this story as inspirational. It takes just one person to light up that small, dark corner of their world. And it makes me want to try to find more time in my life to change more things that do need to be changed. Yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. and the second best part of the story is that the school did relent and they issued a statement which read, that resolution was based on the Jefferson County School Board's legal obligations that have been established by binding court precedent. So they actually acknowledged the fact that what they were doing was illegal and that there had been court precedent set by the, by the Supreme Court of the United States. Yeah. And I think, you know, I'm really glad that you highlighted that, that all it takes is, is just one person just standing up and, and fighting for constitutional values in the United States, for fighting for the separation of church and government. Um, because... You know, when I first started reading this, one of the first things that came to my mind was the the prayer and and the the religious ceremony that was going on in West Virginia, because at at the center of both of these cases, and, and we talked about it on on a past nonprofits episode. So definitely, folks, if if you haven't seen that, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, scroll through the videos; it's real simple. You could, you got this. Um, but at the center of both of these stories is a single person honestly 
just feeling shitty because these people are shoving Jesus down their throat. They're they're having to sit there and they're being forced to to be told that that they're not good enough, that they're less than, and, and just because they don't eat some magic crackers every so often, like that's ridiculous. And and that is what is at the center of all of this. At the center of all of this is more marginalization and more othering of people, more trying to to put one group and one ideology on a pedestal in the light with beautiful gold tassels and everything you want. And the rest of you can suffer. The rest of you can just suck it the hell up because, you know, <laughs> if only you had God on your side. Um, it's so frustrating to see stuff like this, you know, but it is so wonderful when there is some progress, when, when there is actually, you know, uh, an organization, a, a public school taking responsibility, a, a superintendent sending out a letter saying, hey, you know what? This one was our bad. Um, I, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with a student walking up to a teacher one day and saying, hey, you know, I, I want to start a group where just a couple of us you know, religious folk of whatever stripe can can get together after school and and just hold a hold a little, you know, Bible study or something. I, I don't have a problem with that because they should have the right to do that, just like we should have the right to have secular student alliances. And we do in a lot of places, but it cannot be OK for the authorities of the school. For those in charge, the coaches, the 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 teachers, the the principles, it is not okay for them to push any religious ideology. It, it, that is not what we should be doing at our public schools. Um, Teo, was there was there something here that we needed to pay attention to? Was there anything here that um, was was maybe just a little bit a little bit funky in your eyes? Yeah, um, at the end of the article, um, there are three articles about this. So read the one with the little plot twist. There were two things that uh, made me worried. One is that people, well, you know, they they ask people their opinion. And let me let me quote Beverly Towery, a local resident, who said that she was a little disappointed because, let me quote, God is part of our community and our daily lives, so that's removing that opportunity for them to expose to that, referring to, you know, removing the prayer uh, at the beginning of the game. And the school said that, well, they are going to defend voluntary religious expression, which, as you said, I have no problem with that. But they are talking about a guy called Kennedy, um, where do I have, Joseph Kennedy. And Joseph Kennedy is a guy who was fired in 2015 for praying on the 50-yard line and allow, allowing students to, and community members to join him. So uh, I don't remember, did he stop it or it was just he in the center? Well, but the thing that the school is it's saying that they are going to support the vision of this guy uh, worries me. But because, as you said, um, secular, a group of a, a group of people just praying on their own because they want and all of that. Yes, you can do that. There is no problem with it. They have the right to do it. But forcing people or forcing this meeting in the middle of a huge event with a lot of people who are not, they are not there to go to pray. They are not there for a religious, um, for a religious event. They are there because they like football and they want to watch the sport that they like. So forcing that onto others um, is even dishonest. Um, yeah, there was certain word with H that Sekira mentioned that we keep forgetting about. And so it's, no, it's just not honest. It's, it's forcing the religion onto others and then they want to play the victim card. And um, yeah, that, that, that goes on hand with all the awful laws that we have been talking about before. So uh, I'm, I'm cautious. I'm just going to be cautious. That's, that's all that I'm saying. Where do you well, come down is, on this? Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah. I'm about to say there is that there is a dim spot. This the school district supervisor, an elected position, I might point out, 
um, was quoted as saying, the adherence to the court's ruling should not be understood as a rejection of students' religious rights and liberties in the school setting. The Jefferson County Board of Education remains firmly committed to respecting and protecting those rights and liberties in every way permitted by the Constitution and the laws of the United States. He's basically coming out, pushing back a little bit, but saying, oh, I'm still going to stay within the law. But I have to wonder, it's just like like the quote from the woman that Teo said and, and uh, related to us and the fact that nobody bothered to say anything about this for so long shows that, that this is a very religious community. Mm -hmm. And I have to wonder if he made this statement just as a platitude to that religious community that, so let's face it, it's, it's the bright, shiny buckle of the Bible belt Alabama is. You know, and, and I hope that's all it is. I could only hope that that's all it is, is a platitude and not a real philosophy that this gentleman has. Yeah. Do you think, uh, Kelly, do you think this is kind of like what you were talking about earlier, uh, um, a moment where those of us on the atheist, secular, humanist, non-religious, is is this a moment where where we should take the opportunity to reach out to those that that aren't exactly in our camp that that are a part of some religious community or organization and and kind of reach out and say hey join us um and and how how would we even do that um it, that's a really good question and justin looney who's one of the volunteers here at the aca i was interviewing him once for my for my thing meet the aca and he came up with one, an amazing idea it was basically we need to have a network of atheist ambassadors people who are willing to go out and talk to the religious community, to go to churches and, and say, look, here we are, we're atheists, we're nothing to fear, we're not evil, we don't really eat babies, and, and be an ambassador to bridge that gap, to create that understanding between us and potential allies, to blunt this horrible sore, Christian sword that they're beating us with. Yeah, yeah, I think that is, I think that is really, really well said, and absolutely I agree. We we have to take an opportunity like this to be able to say, look, uh, Hindus, uh, Muslims, <laughs> here, they're, they're, they're not going to be praying your prayer. Um, and we think you should have the right on your own voluntarily. If again, we, we've all said we, we think it, there's absolutely no problem with a student themselves saying, Hey coach, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to take a minute. I'm just going to run over here. I'm going to, I'm going to pray my thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do my, my stuff and whatnot. Hey, no problem. Just don't shove it down our throats and, and don't, don't force people to feel like crap simply because you tell them that they are because they don't believe in your fairy tale. But Teo, wrap us up on this. What do you think? What's the, what's the bright line? How do we, how do we walk out of here? Uh, happy and excited and, and focused to do more. You really think I'm wi way wiser than I really am? I'm just thinking about Kelly's idea. Well, uh, whose idea was it? The ambassadors? The IEC uh, ambassadors? Ju Justin Looney. He answers the emails here at the ACA. Amazing. Justin, you're awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a great idea. Um, of course, we are not going to go like Jehovah Witnesses going door to door, but... Uh, it's a very good idea to show ourselves to the community well in any way that we can because i've heard of atheists who cannot show their faces can you believe that it's terrible so yeah um showing the world that we are real people that we are not uh, satan worshipers that we can work together explaining why re uh, the state and the religion should be separated they shouldn't be mixed together I, I I mean, it's it's awesome because you show people Afghanistan, how people are suffering in there, what is happening at that place, and they don't realize that their religions are trying to do the same in their own countries, and it it blows my mind. It's it's for me it's crazy. I I for real it's I do not understand how people don't make the association. So I guess we need more activism, more of this thing that we are doing in here and show the world that atheists are just regular people and that when religions are trying to take over one country, well, that is going to suck for all other religions and also for the lighter version of those religions because they are never going to go with 
with the light theocracy where, oh yeah, let's follow some of the things that Jesus said, but this thing about slaves, let's, let's omit it. No, they are going to go with everything. I'm not saying that slavery is returning, but according to the Bible, it should. So I don't know, read your Bible, people. There are a lot of things why you shouldn't follow your Bible. So pay attention think, to it. I think you, uh, you said something really great there, which is let's, let's make sure we're out there and we're connecting with people and we're showing people that being an atheist is normal. Being somebody that, that is secular is normal. 